Hello and welcome to Shorts in Psychology. In this video, we're going to explore science as a human endeavour in psychology and its key concepts within the SACE psychology curriculum. We'll also look at how to identify these key concepts within articles and how to summarise it for a science as a human endeavour assessment task. So what does science as a human endeavour actually mean? Let's start by breaking down the meaning of each part of the phrase. Science is the systematic study of the structure and behaviour of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. Endeavour is an attempt to achieve a goal. Therefore, when taken together, science as a human endeavour highlights science as a way of knowing and doing and explores the purpose, use and influence of science in society. It involves investigating the dynamic nature of psychology and how psychologists develop new understanding and insights and produce innovative solutions to everyday and complex problems and challenges. In psychology, science as a human endeavour, or SHE, is divided into three key concepts. These are communication and collaboration, development and application, and influence. It is important to note that while these key concepts underpin the context, approaches and activities used within SACE psychology, they are neither comprehensive nor exclusive. Each key concept has a number of elaborations. Let's explore each of these key concepts and its elaborations in more detail. The first elaboration under the communication and collaboration key concept is the idea that science is a global enterprise that relies on clear communication, international conventions and review and verification of results. Scientists communicate their findings in a variety of ways, from interviews and articles in mainstream media to conference presentations and journal publications. Journal articles are peer reviewed this means that the author's scholarly work, research or ideas are subjected to the scrutiny of others who are experts in the same field and are thus their peers. Psychology also involves the use of international conventions such as standardised tests, data collection techniques and the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, which is a product of years of effort from hundreds of international experts in all aspects of mental health. Identifying the elaboration of communication within articles is pretty straightforward. For example, in this excerpt, we are told that the researchers published their findings in the journal Neuron on the 12th of October. It is important when writing a science as a human endeavour task to summarise findings and discuss how examples illustrate key concepts of she in your own words. In this case, we could summarise by saying the researchers communicated their findings about serotonin and dopamine in the human brain by publishing their results in the journal Neuron on October the 12th. The other aspect of the communication and collaboration key concept is the idea that collaboration between psychologists and stakeholders advances research and understanding. It requires shared evidence from many sources in a multidisciplinary approach. Scientific advancement involves a diverse range of individual scientists and teams of scientists working within an increasingly global community practice. Other stakeholders could include government, businesses or schools. For example, studying the impact of mindset on student motivation and achievement would require the involvement of schools in addition to the scientists. Furthermore, education departments and other areas of government may be interested in the results due to their potential implications for educational policy. Psychological research is also often conducted in different settings and collects evidence from many sources in order to increase the data's validity. Here is an example of collaboration. In this excerpt, three different teams are conducting related research in either animal models or human volunteers. These teams of scientists have collaborated to combine their findings to draw conclusions about the role of serotonin and dopamine in cognition. Taken together, these findings suggest. They have then communicated their findings by co-authoring a publication. We could summarise this in our own words by saying, researchers at three different institutions, including the University College London, Virginia Tech and Wake Forest School of Medicine, collaborated to study the role of serotonin and dopamine in both animal models and human volunteers. 
The second key concept is development and application. This includes the elaboration that developments in research and technology lead to advances in psychological understanding. The development of psychological concepts, models and theories is a dynamic process that involves analysis of evidence and sometimes produces ambiguity and uncertainty. Psychological concepts, models and theories are continually reviewed and reassessed as new evidence is obtained and as emerging technologies enable new avenues of investigation. This article excerpt is a good example of development. Researchers have developed a brain simulation which has enabled them to replicate activity that occurs throughout brain circuits. This area of investigation has been made possible due to improving technology and has subsequently led to advances in psychological understanding of neural networks. In our own words, we could discuss this by saying, the development of a brain simulation in the laboratory has enabled researchers to understand how different types of neural networks create complex interactions in the brain. The other aspect of the development and application key concept is the idea that the application of psychological understanding can enable scientists to develop solutions, design actions and evaluate and respond to economic, socio-cultural and environmental factors. The application of science may provide great benefits to individuals, the community and the environment, but may also pose risks and have unexpected outcomes. For example, our growing understanding of positive psychology has led to many changes in education, including the explicit teaching of growth mindset from early learning settings upwards. Another example would be the increasing prevalence in chronic stress and worker burnout has led to much research in this area and debate about the standard 40-hour working week. Already, some businesses in Australia have transitioned to a shorter working week to improve both the well-being and productivity of their staff. This article is an example of how psychological research has developed solutions in response to a socio-cultural factor, student learning and motivation. Researchers have applied their findings on the impact of mindset on student learning and motivation to develop computer programs, classes and stories that teach children about growth mindset in order to enhance success in their pursuits and motivation. The third and final key concept is influence. Psychological knowledge and its application are both influenced by and influence economic, socio-cultural, religious, ideological, political and environmental perspectives in a local, national and global context. In very simplistic terms, what this is basically saying is that psychological knowledge and how it is applied is influenced by a range of contexts. These contexts also influence how psychological knowledge is acquired and applied. This occurs both in small local contexts to national and even globally. Let's look at examples of both to help understand exactly what this key concept means. Here's an example of psychological knowledge being influenced by a context, in this case an economical one. A mathematical method used to model the flow of information on the stock market has been used to build a model of the brain. Researchers use this model to study how information moves from, from one region of the brain to another. This is an example of the reverse, psychological knowledge influencing a context. In this case, a socio-cultural and for some even a religious one, the fear of death. Since the 1970s, psychologists have studied the benefits of hallucinogens such as LSD, something that has been revisited in more recent times. The known benefits of LSD in reducing anxiety, depression and fear of death has influenced clinical trials where hallucinogens have been used to alleviate the physical and psychological suffering of terminal cancer patients and those suffering from severe pain. Researchers found that patients developed a peculiar disregard for the gravity of their situations and talked freely about their impending death, improving their psychological well-being. The other elaboration related to influence is that while the application of science may provide great benefits to individuals, the community and the environment, it may also pose risks and have unexpected outcomes. 
Therefore, it is important to consider the consequences, both positive, negative, and perhaps unexpected. These consequences need to be continually monitored and evaluated. For example, a positive consequence of Harlow's monkey experiments was a greater understanding of maternal attachment. This has greatly influenced many aspects of society from healthcare to early education and parenting. Decision making about socio-scientific issues often involves consideration of multiple lines of evidence and a range of needs and values. This includes trying to identify any risks or ethical considerations associated with the use and application of psychological knowledge. However, as science is an ever evolving body of knowledge, it isn't always able to provide definitive answers when informing public debate. For example, despite the potential benefits of hallucinogens such as psilocybin, the active ingredient in magic mushrooms to, to treat major depression, there are risks involved with its use and important ethical considerations. As a result, Australia's Therapeutic Goods Administration, the TGA, has not approved their use in Australia until more data on their safety and efficacy is available. As well as the risks and ethical considerations associated with the use of hallucinogens, there are also ethical and safety concerns related to those patients suffering from major depression for whom current treatments aren't effective. They are currently prevented from accessing a treatment that could relieve their symptoms. How can their safety and well-being be cared for in the meantime? I hope this video has clarified the key concepts and elaborations for science as a human endeavour in psychology and that you feel more confident not only being able to identify examples of them within your own research, but also how to discuss and summarise them in your own words. Thanks for listening and good luck.